Nick Roach is known for being a great defenseman on the Chicago Bears, but you really don't know too much about his love for dogs or his upcoming wedding in February. Today, Mitch is going to speak with him about his life growing up in Milwaukee, his family, and much more. Uh, Nick, we were talking, um, grew up in Milwaukee. Uh, what was it like uh, in Milwaukee? Very, was it an athletic family, a uh, supportive family? What, what, what was um, childhood like? You know, I had a big, my mom's got a lot of brothers and sisters, and they all played basketball pretty much. So, you know, naturally I grew up uh, in the basketball gym. I did that from basically like third grade all the way to high school. Um, picked up football my sophomore year of high school, and then ended up working out pretty good, got a scholarship to go to Northwestern, and then I uh, retired from basketball to my mom's chagrin. She was pretty upset. She like cried every Tuesday and Friday night when I wasn't playing. Like, <laughs> what am I gonna do? But uh, you know, just started playing football and then ended up here. Now you you had a brother who was uh, quite a number of years older than you, and then mm -hmm. uh, your sister uh, following a few years behind you. So you really were right there. Uh, I mean, you 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 pretty much paved your own path, didn't you? Yeah, I was, I mean, I was the first football player in the family, and um, I wasn't the first athletic scholarship, though, so I kind of had, you know, my uncles to lean on for advice as far as that goes, and then, you know, it turned out for my sister, she got a scholarship for track to Minnesota, so she was able to, you know, ask me questions just about dorm life and what to expect, that type of thing. You know, what, what should I expect out of dorm life? You should expect <laughs> never getting to sleep when you want to. Right. <laughs> you know, people doing loud, too much loud stuff in the hallways. Um, you know, low quality food, depending. <laughs> you know, like you, you figure out where to eat very quick. Um, just, it's a lot of fun though, being around that atmosphere. It's, there's nothing else like it, really. Take me back to your, your high school team in, in Milwaukee. Uh, first of all, how successful a team were you guys? We qualified for the playoffs the first time in school history my senior year, which was like first time in like a hundred years. So that was cool for and, us. And what position were you playing back then? Uh, I was a running back slash return man slash receiver. So quite so, quite the change from what people know you as in the pros. Right, yeah. I played a little bit of linebacker, but I wasn't, you know, that wasn't really my forte at that point. Every guy remembers their best game or their stats. <laughs> what about you? If I could really remember, it was uh, my junior year, or maybe my sophomore year, we were at this uh, school called Homestead. It's up in Milwaukee, northern suburb. And um, I think I had like seven touchdowns or something like that. We kept running the same play, and they just wouldn't stop it. So, you know, that was sweet, obviously. Talk to me about the, the recruiting process for you. Uh, Northwestern, um, I mean, one of the top uh, academic schools in the country. Uh, how do they recruit players? Is it similar to what other schools, uh, that uh, the traditional football yeah. powerhouses did? I'm not, I mean, I didn't really get recruited by too many schools. It was, it was either Northern Illinois or Northwestern. And I do remember one of the big things was I had to get uh, my ACT up because it was, I had a high enough grade point. It was like 3.7 or 3.8 or something like that, but I only got a 19 the first time I took the ACT. And so, you know, the coach who was recruiting me was like, you know, we really would love you to come here, but you're going to have to take that again. <laughs> so, so I took it again. I got a 24 the second time. And then he was like, well, that should be good enough and we'll, we'll call you back. Uh, I went down for an official visit. Um, you know, had the whole steak and lobster dinner, you know, that whole thing. Uh, met all the coaches and sat in the meeting rooms. Did a whole, that was really the only official visit I went on. Charlton Heston call you? <laughs> <laughs> no. I think the uh, school president was giving some speech, you know, it was 
It was cool, though. I knew I was going there. What, what was it like playing in Northwestern? Uh, your years were pretty good. I mean, you had well, you had a good group of core guys because uh, mm-hmm. you never really heard of a lot of Northwestern guys getting drafted into the NFL uh, unless it was around your era there and you mm-hmm. guys were making it to the Rose Bowl. You made it to the Rose Bowl in your year, or was that right nah, after? That was or right before. That was be right before. Right before, but okay. They, they had actually gone to, they won the Big Ten, I think, two years before in 2001. Mm-hmm. Um, I got there in 03, and we went to two bowl games in my career. Um, which, I mean, you know, we were fairly successful. Yeah, you had Barry Cofield with you, right? Mm-hmm. Who Barry. Uh, Barry, New York Giant. Mm-hmm. Luis Ooh. Castillo. Luis Castillo. Out in San Diego. He's a first-round pick. I think Barry was third or fourth round. Yeah, him. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, let me, I, I got to ask you that. How hard is it at Northwestern balancing the academics? Are you studying all day long except for when you're practicing there? Or? I mean, pretty much it was, like, for, for my major, I was an art major. So, all of our classes were, like, at least three hours long. Mm-hmm. So we were in the studio, you know, doing whatever, like doing photography, like you had to develop all the film or in sculpture class, you're like sawing all your wood that you need, you know, stuff like that. So the outside the class work wasn't as much, but it was always had to be in there getting projects done. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was just balancing that, you know, having to be at school all day and maybe having to grab a quick bite to eat and then going straight to practice. Yeah, are you still, do you still create things? I do things more casually. I wasn't, I wasn't really grooming myself to be an actual studio artist. Um, no, no Patrick Swayze ghost mm, thing going on there? <laughs> None of that. But, uh, <laughs> you know, every now and then, like every year I do, uh, I like design a t-shirt for our family reunion or a couple of years ago I did a mural, like a conservation health and wellness mural at an elementary school, uh, like on their lunchroom wall. But just like little stuff that comes up, like the, the program for the Northwestern game versus Illinois yeah. at Wrigley. You, you designed that? Yeah. Well, how proud are you of that? I was pretty proud of it. I'm not going to lie. I mean, you know, they came up to me. The, the cover of that was better than the actual way they played the game <laughs> right. on the field. Exactly. That was a highlight. You yeah. Know, that was exactly. one good thing. For They're right. That and the fact that you couldn't turn around on the field. You had to go right. the same direction. Yeah, but, but we, had, you know, we had good seats. They treated me well for it. So. How did that come up? Did they, uh, they call you? or? Uh, I was actually up there working out, coincidentally, uh, in the summertime, and they asked me if I wanted to do it. And I told them I'd be honored to. As you get into the NFL then, so uh, you're playing along, and you went undrafted. Mm-hmm. So, there, but there had to be scouts that had to be looking and checking you out and everything. How does that process go for, for a kid who's uh, involved in college or whatever, or, or someone in the family? Well, what's it like? Do they call the parents? Do they start, is it like an investigation mm-hmm. kind of thing where they check everything about you? I mean, as far as I know, it starts with contacting the college coaches. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, your college coaches will have a kind of a sense of the upper level interest. So for me, it was like my linebacker coach and uh, my head coach, Coach Fitz, was kind of just saying, you know, that there's some interest, but you need to work on this and that, um, you know, to give yourself a better shot. So that's really what a lot of it was my senior year. But then I got hurt, you know, with maybe three or four games left. Um, And I was gonna be out for some months because I had broken my ankle, needed surgery. Right. So, you know, kind of all the attention stopped, you know, it was like, oh, we were you were feeling good, but yeah, well, now you're the, hurt, so. the the Daquan uh, Bowers or Bowens, uh, yeah, yeah so, exactly. But um, you know things pe- pick back up once you show that you're healthy, um, and the team just kind of wonder, you know, maybe if we can work him out or get him into a camp or something like that, we can see what he could do. When when Northwestern brought you over, uh, did they want you as a running back receiver? Or did they automatically say, you know what, we see linebacker in you? <laughs> it was pretty much when I went on my visit, they were like, you're gonna be a linebacker. You know. And you were cool with that? Yeah, I was, I mean, getting free college. Free college, great cool education. Things, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was like, yeah, I'll do it. You, you get, a tri- you get uh, to try out uh, for the Chargers. Mm-hmm. Um, how long were you there before they decided it wasn't going to work out? I was there <laughs> basically, you know, right after the draft until like week 10 or so. Mm-hmm. And I was, I was on the practice squad, so, you know, I was just doing that couple day a week thing and not traveling and then uh, basically the Bears you know called up my agent or called right. the Chargers or however it works and said that they wanted to put me on the active roster. How, how does a, how does practice squad work for people I mean we, we squad hear about is, it. Yeah it's uh I mean honestly it depends on how you look at it but to me it was a great thing because you know a guy who didn't necessarily think I was going to be in the league at all was getting paid you know a good amount of money just mm-hmm. to work for 
what's the weekday? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Saturday's a walkthrough and Sunday. So you're working like three days a week, pretty much. And you just like are getting paid to stay in shape and, you know, practice. Uh, for, for you, what was a turning point? Um, uh, who, which coach or when was that uh, moment where you saw that you were not going to be just a practice or a fringe guy? You were really going to be a contributor to, a, to the Bears, as it turns out. I, th I think it took a while, honestly, until... I mean, for me, it was like I had to be in the situation before I had confidence that I could do it, you know, because I realized that you know, the NFL is not like... It's not like college where the guys can only be so much older than you, you know, before they get pushed out. It's like the NFL is guys that could be, you know, a full 10 years older than right. you and still be, you know, the pros, like, perfect like at the their the London Fletchers pass. of the exactly. world, yeah. So that was intimidating to me, just being a young guy, just getting in, like, you know, there's so many more people to try to live up to mm -hmm. um, as far as performance. So once, it wasn't really until I got to play special teams in some games, um, and like have a couple tackles, you know, like make some blocks that I started to feel like I could probably do this. I, I special teams I love in high school. I remember and loved. I mean, you know, you're running down there like a banshee, or whatever. How is it different than the pros? Obviously, uh, if your head's not on a swivel, and I know that you've been injured in special teams, mm -hmm. concussions and such. How dangerous is it, and what's it like if you don't know what's going on around you on that field there? It's it's hectic, man. Like it's dangerous because you know, like I'm not. A big guy at right. all like in normal life and so let alone when I walk on the football field I'm not like the biggest guy by any stretch so you know say like I'm on the front line of kickoff return so I'm supposed to block for Devin and like 15 yards away from me is this dude who's 300 pounds and he ran like a 4-4 <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> right. And I'm supposed to block him one-on-one -on -one. so just like those type of collisions where he has a 30 or 40 yard head start and I'm standing still like supposed to block, block him in place like stone him you know that just that type of assignment isn't unusual. And what, that's what makes like NFL special teams different because those kind of freaks are on every you know, position, on every phase, ready to kill somebody. So then uh, for people who are maybe aren't from Chicago and don't follow as much, somebody like a Garrett Wolf who's, a sta who, who's really made a name for himself on special teams, mm -hmm. uh, is that impressive? I mean, he, he's my height, 5'8", right. if, if that, right. you know, and he's yes. out there doing it. I mean, that just goes to show the value of a guy like Garrett because he is, you know, kind of undersized um, and, you know, a little bit, I guess, like undermatched or, you know, I don't know how you want to call it, but he just still is able to perform at a high level, higher than most, um, you know, which just speaks to his value. Throughout your life growing up and, and playing, what's been the one piece of advice that, that, you, that you first heard and who gave it to you and, and, and that you really tried to use for yourself? That's a good question. Um, I would say my mom, my mom's like a huge, you know, sports fan. I don't know if it, because all her brothers and sisters played or, you know, she was herself, but, you know, she would always say when I was discouraged or, you know, when my sister would come home discouraged, like there's always somebody better than you. And not to say it like you're not good, but just don't beat yourself up about your performance because, it, I mean, the day's going to come when somebody just going to outdo you once in a while but that doesn't mean you know you beat yourself up or you stop going after what you love to do or you know anything like that so just kind of keeping that perspective anything you would have done differently from now from when you were a kid coming up to now uh, anything that any any regret or, or said I could have done this better mm -hmm. um, I guess I wish I would have played more linebacker sooner you know if I would have I think about what if I would have played like Pee Wee or, mm -hmm. you know, played like Pop Warner or something. If I would have been any further along now. But, you could have had four or five more concussions right, and been worse right. off though. <laughs> you know, a couple more broken bones. Right. But I, I wouldn't say I regret anything. A NFC Championship game. Uh, on the field, I was uh, in the stands and all, but what's it like on the field? Uh, how, mm -hmm. how deafening is it? And can you, how's the communication on the field? What's it, what, what does it feel like? It's just, it's sweet. You know, it's, it's as prime time as prime time gets. Um, a game between, you know, us and the Packers, like, for everything before the game, for everything. You know, it's mm -hmm. just like, you really can't say it. I mean, if you're just, if you're there, you know how it feels because it's always, it's the playoffs plus, you know, a million because it's the end of the road for whoever loses. And it's the biggest rivalry of all time. 
It's sweet. It, ma it makes it that much more fun because you can just, you know, let it loose and realize, you know, this is it. All right, growing up in Milwaukee, uh, football, were you a Packers fan at all? And why not? Not at all. I mean, first of all, you should know I really don't watch sports yeah. and never have. And then my whole family hated the Packers, so it never crept in. And Green Bay's so far away from Yeah, it's way. not. It's actually, I live closer now here in Lake Bluff than I do to Green Bay, like back in Milwaukee. So uh, uh, You've had a lot of free time. Mm -hmm. guys, guys trying to stay in shape any way they can. For you... Um, obviously, you spent a lot of time with Tahoe, your dog there, right. and she's very well trained. Yeah. Uh, can do the uh, play dead trick. Yeah, for the most part, she's it, good. Yeah, um, you like to cook. You like to mm -hmm. eat. W w what uh, What other hobbies? What do you try to do to keep yourself busy? Uh, do you have a lot of in different interests? Um, I mean, you pretty much named them all. We, I usually try to go out on a walk with her for, you know, an hour if not two, just. Kind of enjoying the scenery because up here in the suburbs it's nice. You got a lot of forest preserves, mm -hmm. or you know we'll go to like the downtown Lake Forest and stroll around stuff like that. Um, and then yeah, just you know cooking, kind of experimenting with things that you don't really have time to do uh, during the season. So you and I have talked about your, your sister Devin, mm -hmm. um, uh, pound for pound. Uh, Better athlete, as good an athlete. <laughs> what she's she's she, pound. she redshirted at Minnesota. She's on a she shot put and yeah. disc. Um, school no shot put disc. Oh, disc hammer and weight. Disc hammer and weight. Yeah. Sorry, mm -hmm. set school records in high school. Right. Uh, beat all your auntie's records. Mm -hmm. Pound for pound. She's early in her career. Okay. So we'll just let her build her resume. And then I'll answer that question. On the basketball court, who wins? Basketball court, she has no chance. Pro Sports has given you an avenue to open up doors for other people and also to work with foundations, charities, to order, even if it's just autographing something, they're auctioning it off. To, to you, how special is that uh, to have that opportunity? And, and, and are, are there organizations, charities that you've enjoyed working with? I think it's, I think it's great just to be able to go and see how many good things are out there because in the media you never hear about pro athletes doing anything positive mm -hmm. um, so to be around so many guys who have you know responsible and you know cause worthy charities um, is fun like we like to go and get a free dinner you know and get some sweet items you know mm -hmm. donate to what you know is a good cause um, like last week we went to buy the hand for kids um, which is really like a it's a Christian based um, after school program to get kids and they only serve kids who are failing or you know have like D's or worse oh wow um, just to try to get them to passing and get them to graduate you know to reduce the risk of dropping out and crime rate and you know mm -hmm. just trickles down to a lot of things even economic effects of you know taking care of people on welfare that type of stuff right so they really started the ground up to try to make the kids lives better and a number of you guys on your team too it must feel great I mean I mean I know Des Clark does stuff with kids in Lakeland Florida mm -hmm. Rasheed Davis is doing some stuff with kids here in Chicago yeah. so um, obviously a lot of opportunities to you know like you said yeah. the guys call you up and say hey what are you doing yeah no, it's yeah. a lot of fun last year we had a good time we went to Lance Briggs's event he does every year back home right in Sacramento a group of us went and, like did a camp for the kids like a one-day camp and you know kind of coached them up and Ran around with him. Have you had uh, that uh, uh, that moment, that I, I made it moment, that, that where, whether it was you were recognized somewhere where you never thought you would have been recognized, mm -hmm. or uh, have you had that instance yet? I don't think so. I think the league is too is too brief of a time to to get that. Mm -hmm. Just figure, you know, it's not it's not a good thing that I'm going into my fifth year and I'm already past the career average. You know what I mean? Like that's kind of right. scary more than it is I made it. So I think that if you're concentrating on trying to stay in the league, you don't get to that point. You, know, you probably get kicked out before you feel like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's a sad, it, the, it, but, yeah. but that's sports. That's, that's the real. nature of the business, yeah. right? And and your uncle, now you've had, uh, your uncle played overseas, played pro mm -hmm. basketball overseas. Yeah, he's a head coach now for Ohio Northern. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. So uh, do you have a love or passion for basketball? No. <laughs> I I used to play. I like I enjoyed playing when I did. I played, you know, on all the school teams and then some AAU and we traveled a lot and went to national tournaments and had a lot of fun, but you know, when I stopped playing, I was 
okay with that. And I haven't played organized since. All right, give us uh, one bit of insight uh, into the Bears locker room or private life. or who, Who's the player in that team uh, that people might think is uh, either the scares the most serious, but really really is one of the guys that, that cracks you all up? Scariest or most serious? I would say that, that Brian gets a bad rap, you know, Urlacher. Mm -hmm. The media, you know, they take him as this, I don't know, like extra serious, like, Warrior, really, yeah, warrior kind of guy, but he's he's probably like the nicest, most genuinely just kind guy that you could come across. You know, if you were to meet him in public, he wouldn't he wouldn't big time anybody. You know, he would shake everybody's hand, sign anything you want. Um, he was just like all around nice guy. He'd give you a ride. You know, like wait hours for you at the practice just to give you a ride somewhere. Just like a good dude. All right, going to your Milwaukee days. Mm -hmm. Favorite Milwaukee Bucks player of all time. Sam Cassell. Okay, not world be free, huh? <laughs> uh, best beach in San Diego? Coronado. Mm -hmm. Best gangster movie? Goodfellas. Okay, favorite food that you like to eat? Mexican. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, any dish? Burrito. Burrito. If I didn't play football, I would be? Healthier. <laughs> well, you're a true politician. You got to sidestep it. I was looking for another line of work, oh, but that works. Oh my bad. No, healthier is good. Right. First thing I said. First thing that comes to mind. Okay. First up, I have Nick. He wants to ask a question about your coaches. Um, who has a better defensive mind, Rob Marinelli or Pat Fitzgerald? A better defensive mind. Um. I'd have to put them as equals because they're both kind of crazy. Fair answer. And to play defense, you got to be a little crazy. Do you have any elaboration on that as far as what crazy you define? Psycho <laughs> slash insane. All right. I respect that. Right. Um, I actually have a set of questions from DJ Moore. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Here wonderful. we go. First up, how do you feel about the labor situation? Uh, well, obviously, I'm opposed to it. I wish that it wasn't the way it is. But it's so far out of our hands at this point that there's not really too much I can do about it except work out and yeah. be ready. Um, for as far as fo football, how many more years do you plan on playing? I guess as many as I can, you know, as long as I stay healthy and they still want me. Right on. When do you plan on starting a family? <laughs> <laughs> starting a family. Well, I'm not due to get married until next year, <laughs> next February, so sometime after that. What do you do to keep yourself healthy while you're competing in the NFL? Do you have a regimen? Uh, I mean, nothing, like nothing crazy. I just watch what I eat in general. Just you know, the nothing. Work yeah, out, work out. Healthy. Last question is from Stephen um, in regards to Julius Peppers. Um, how does the play of him affect your position if it does? It makes it way easier Easy. for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I'm you know pretty much behind him, and when he can eat up, you know, one to two to three people on offense, that kind of leaves us free a lot, so. Absolutely. Yeah.